Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So basically, what I'll say quickly is that we have a crisis in this country. We have a crisis, we have no uh, medicines and medical supplies. We don't have. The minister can, can, can say whatever she wants and, and so on and so forth, but the bottom line is that we have a crisis. Just like we have a crisis of millennium, where we don't have maize and maize is really important, we also have a crisis in terms of medicines and medical supplies. All because of the incompetence the selfishness of uh, this government, their insecurity and corruption. This is why we don't have medicines. It is nothing like, no, there is drought, uh, there was drought of medicines, nothing. We don't need drought. We don't need natural calamities when you talk about medicines. It's not about Ukraine. It is simply because this government, the new Don government, is very incompetent. We have never had a government that is so incompetent starting from the president up to the person that is always in the government. All those who are appointed, all those who have come with this new Don government, they are incompetent, starting with the president. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to, uh, uh, to, to apologize to say this. Our president is incompetent, and that's why some of us are saying he should resign. The crises that we are following, that we are having, are as a result of that incompetence. As a result of political insecurity, there is high political insecurity in the New Dawn government, starting with the president himself, is highly politically uh, insecure. And then there is selfishness. They are choosing who they should deal with, who they should work with. And there is also corruption. Corruption because they want to make money. At every little business transac uh, government transaction, they want to make money. This is happening, it's real. Don't listen to the propaganda and the hot air, the uh, uh, lip, lip services that they are talking about fighting corruption. These, these people in this New Dawn government are highly corrupt. And they have caused this crisis in men's and they have caused this crisis in medical supplies and medicines. Now, how did this come about? It came about soon after they came into power. What did they do? They labeled all those people who were bringing, who were supplying medical supplies in this country. They labeled them corrupt. They labeled them PF. They labeled them people that are supported in government. And they canceled a number of tenders. They canceled a number of contracts. They labeled other uh, pharmaceuticals as people that they cannot deal with. As a result, because of that, we had a break in the supply of medicines. That supply of, um, that break in supply of medicines and medical supplies led to the parliamentary committee revealing that the availability rate was barely over 50%. When in actual fact, according to the standards, even when you look at the World Health Organization, the minimum in terms of availability rate should be 70%. If it reaches 70%, it is a red flag. But these people, just like Tuli maize, when they saw, they have so much maize. For them, no, we don't need this maize, let's start selling it. And so equally with the medicines, when they were looking, which we are leaving it at 80%, they said, no, this is too much. They thought they had time. And eventually now, we had a problem. Why they put it at 70%? It's because medicines, you don't buy it. The way we buy Kanduro, the way we buy Ngani Miyotoka, the way we buy cows, no. There is a process, it takes time before you have your medicines into your country. That's why they put it at 70%. But according to them, because of their incompetence, 70% was good enough. Even 50%, if you remember, go and watch Masilvia Masebo. When they were presenting that parliamentary committee report, according to Masilvia Masebo, 51% was good enough. She was saying we have medicines. But that is incompetence. 
So even Shredanda, I'm not just talking, I'm not just using words without backing them up. I am talking about reality. 70%, 50% penalty, we are okay. That is incompetence. That is ignorance. And even the president, I've said the president is incompetent. Because if the president was not incompetent, if the president was properly advised, when he had 50%, he should have been alarmed. He should have been alarmed. But even him, he was comfortable in competence. And then the political insecurity, whoever was dealing uh, Zambia, they said, no, you are PF, we can't deal with you. And selfishness, wanting to get people that they all in the where they can get something. So they went on this expedition now to start looking for medicines where they can buy medicines. They went to Europe, they went to Asia, and they were told to say, look, medicines we don't buy like that. When they went to, when they went to Europe, they told them, we have our agents in your country. You don't come here as a government. Go and talk to our agents who are registered. These people that are selling medicines here, they are registered in different companies. Medicines is not just sold, yo, because you must see them, but they put them in France. Hey, put them in the state of Panama. Why don't you feel about it? Nah, it doesn't work out like that. You could be a minister, you could be a president. There are people who are registered to supply medicines. And those people are here, and they were leaving them here, going to Europe, going to Asia, and they were being told, go back, we have people who are registered to deal with us. But those people who are registered, they had labeled them criminal. They had labeled them a PF and they, they couldn't get money from them. Now, uh, last year in June, last year in June, there was an expo in, in uh, Egypt. And when Sylvia was heard there is an expo, she packed her bags with her, with, her, with her handlers, they went to Egypt. And they found medicines there and they said, here is our solution. Without knowing that Egypt is not one of the countries at the moment which has been uh, certified to supply us with medicines. So yes, they have the medicines, but unfortunately at the moment Zambra has not certified that country to be supplying us medicines. You can't just be, you can't go to any country and buy medicines. No, it doesn't work out like that. There are countries that are, that are certified by Zambra and the Bureau of Standard to supply us medicines. So whilst Sylvia Masebo was looking at those panadols and quininis and everything, she says, here is my solution. She didn't know that Egypt, as Egypt's medicine, is not yet certified. So, however, she went ahead trying to talk to, to the government so that they can buy medicine. The government there told them, no, as a government of Egypt, we don't sell medicines. It is the individual pharmaceuticals. Talk to them. When they went to them, at the end of the day, they came up with, they wanted to create a purpose vehicle because for them, heaven was in Egypt. Heaven for medicine was in Egypt. So they put up these suppliers, a consortium of suppliers to be supplied to Zambia. And they formed a purpose vehicle, like different companies coming together and they formed like a purpose vehicle, one company, which should be specifically supplied to Zambia. And and, and they thought this is okay. Unfortunately, there was a problem. And one of the problems is the issue that Egypt was still not yet certified. And then, how do they also buy medicines from Egypt without tendering them here? So, those legal issues came up and they abandoned that, uh, that purpose vehicle. That was now, we're talking up to, you know, November. In January, they realized that medicines are running out. Medicines are running out. And even as they are speaking, because from all that time, we haven't had substantive supply of medicines and the medical supplies. We haven't had. So in, the, in January, out of desperation, they decided, together with Baaka in the engine, they said, no, whatever the laws, whatever the impediments that are going on, Let's put them aside. Organize a team of people. Let them go to Egypt. And let them, when they go to Egypt, they should come with medicines. And a group of 14 people was put together, led by, led by the professor, 
Professor Roma Chiengi, who is the advisor to President Daka in the Ichile. So this, this expedition, you can't distance it from President Daka in the Ichile. You can't. And that is where I'm talking about the incompetence. Because here is a president who thinks that he's so powerful and he can do anything. He can forgo the law and just do what he pleases. So for him, he puts up a team. He puts up a team uh, headed by that Chiengi, the uh, then Zamra director, uh, uh, Zamsa, uh, Minister of Justice. It was like a government putting a briefcase. A government put in a briefcase. ZPP was there. Uh, those of the department which are supposed to be involved, he put them together and gave it in a, in a briefcase of GM to say, Kabir Niko, go to Egypt and buy medicines. So that when they reached there, they said, we have come to buy medicines, we have to buy medicines at all costs. But when they reached there, Egypt still told them to say, but as a government, we can't sell you. How are we going to do this? That is how they came up with Zamsa of Egypt, which is called a unified, unified procurement authority. Unified procurement authority. U P A. Unified procurement authority. This is like Zamsa in Zambia, meaning they buy medicines from suppliers. For the government of Egypt, they buy that their job, their objective is to make sure that they buy medicines from suppliers for the government of Egypt. And this is the government, this is the, uh, the institution that our government said you should be buying for us. You buy for us, and we'll be buying from you. But then, like Zamsa here, Zamsa is not a uh, is, 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 is not in business of buying and selling. So they couldn't, how do we sell you? Because we only buy for government. That is our objective. How do we buy for you and you pay us? So what we are going to do, you are going to send money and we put it in a scroll account. An account whereby, it, you know, it is, it, it, it is not in the Egyptian uh, name. Because they are, they are respecting their laws. They are respecting their laws. But to assume them as a good, now I have to eat them. For them, they just want to get medicines. Quite all right, you can say, I mean, this is good. I mean, they are desperate. You can say that, but there is incompetence. And I'll come back to the issue of selfishness and corruption where it is coming in. Now, already, if you look at it, as a government, honestly, how can you send money and they told them the worth of the medicines that they want to buy? It is in this, in this document. All the medicine they want to buy, it is in this document. And the total of this, an explanation of the medicine that they want to buy, is worth $120 million. $120 million. Now, the Egyptian government, they said, no, no, the, the UPA said, you have to send a 60% or 50% of this 120. And that is $60 million. They send it to Egypt so that UPA can be drawing to buy medicines. And if you think of it, I mean, look at how basic it is. It is as good as Walikwata, you have a relative in South Africa. And you say, Imagine that. So when you're talking about incompetence, I mean, our band too. I'm telling you, you wonder where they came from and what they meant. Because even if I've not been in government, certainly how can a government operate like that? You send the money, okay, 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 okay. it is as good as that. This is exactly what is happening here. You want to send $60 million uh, there. Then that UPA will be drawing to be buying medicines in, in Egypt. And then back up in the bus back at me into Zambia. Can you say is that a reliable way of procuring medicines? Is that a way a government should operate? This is DJ Mutati exclusive.
all right that's all right for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below i'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers once again i go by the name of mutatim pondum i love you peace i gotta go